cross-functional collaboration has always been a tricky beast. And now that many businesses have gone virtual, that beast has only gotten trickier. But don't worry, in this video, we'll look at exactly what cross-functional collaboration is, and then we'll explore cross-functional collaboration's biggest challenges and actionable solutions on making it work. Before we begin though, make sure to ring the bell and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest guides, pro tips, and industry insights. So what exactly is cross-functional collaboration? It's when people from different teams rally together to solve a common goal. A team of teams, if you will. Sort of like the Avengers, but with laptops and no Spanx, maybe. So how does this look in the real world? Imagine a B2B SaaS company hiring a copywriting agency to optimize its website copy. This agency will collaborate with multiple teams from the B2B SaaS company in order to get the job done. Different teams, different tasks, all with one common end goal. Now, onto the five biggest challenges businesses face collaborating with different teams. And here's number one, blurred lines of responsibility. Ever notice that the more responsibility you have, the more confused you get about what they actually are? As projects gain momentum and complexity increases, responsibility lines blur and become unclear. This can lead to non-performance and a lot of blame shifting. Without a clear division of responsibility, there's no ownership. And without ownership, projects get delayed. And here's number two, missing context. This can be a huge problem. Without context, companies can waste time by solving a problem that no longer exists or having two different teams work on the same problem without communicating with each other. Number three, competing priorities. You'd think that teams with a common end goal would have no problem working together, but we've all seen Friday Night Lights and we have seen that that's not always the case. Sales folks and marketers, for example, are notorious for clashing with each other. Getting the sales team to prioritize sharing insights can be difficult. They have their own tasks and targets, so it's easy to see how sharing internal knowledge can get deprioritized. On to number four, lack of delegation. CEOs are inherently proactive. Their ability to take on nearly any task and turn it into a DIY project is one of the reasons why they're able to run a successful business. But watch out, this is both a strength and a weakness. It can make CEOs huge bottlenecks. When a CEO becomes a bottleneck, it can become harder to empower managers, and when egos start getting involved, questions about who's actually in charge almost always comes up. And our fifth, ineffective tools. Be honest, is your tech stack working with you or against you? Is half your team using Slack while the other half uses Microsoft Teams? Even here at AppSumo, we've struggled to find the right tools to help us communicate easily. And yes, we understand the irony, but even a marketplace of tools can experience the same problem. Now that we're done with that list, let's get on to the positives and explore seven actionable tips on making cross-functional collaboration actually work. Number one, build and earn trust. Earn a team's trust and you'll boost employee morale and productivity in the long run. You can do this in two ways, either let them know how a knowledge sharing culture benefits them in the long run, or gather regular feedback on how you can improve the marketing materials to help them close the sale. Trust and communication go hand in hand. 99.1% of surveyed employees prefer to work in a workplace where they can discuss issues openly and effectively. Always prioritize transparency and regularly check in with the teams you're collaborating with. Number two, give every employee a voice. Leave an employee or team out and you'll quickly lose their attention in the meeting. Whether it's in person or in a video meeting, make sure every teammate gets a chance to contribute. Even if it means Todd sharing his latest LARP festival extravaganza weekend with everybody. Number three, just ask, damn it. If you're already dealing with project ambiguity, avoid going at it alone because you'll run the risk of making mistakes and having to start over from scratch. Sometimes a conversation with another teammate is all that it takes to know if you're headed in the right direction. Once you find your answers, jot them down in a cloud-based document and share it widely with the relevant team members. But here's a pro tip, heavy documentation in long lists overwhelm people. So set up a welcome page. This way, your teammates can see an overview and click directly to a specific section without having to go through endless lists of content. Number four, appoint a competent leader. Form a management team with a leader for each department. And while you're at it, give it a cool name, like the League of Extraordinary Managers. How do you go about choosing this leader? Look into your regular one-on-ones and quarterly reviews. Based on these meetings, you'll have useful insight on who performs best and possesses leadership qualities. 
Next, when assigning tasks to those leaders, shift from input-based goals to measurable outcomes. An input-based goal like schedule the next month of emails comes with tighter controls than increase lead volume by 25%. The measurable outcome choice empowers your leaders to develop plans and strategies without you having to hold their hand. And here's our number five on the list, cross-train team members. Is it better to be a specialist or a Jack or Jill of all trades? In this case, it's both. You wanna be an expert in at least one main channel, AKA your expertise, and arm yourself with the base knowledge or foundational skills of your collaborating teams. Take Team Building. The company, which runs virtual team building activities for remote teams, requires its marketers to perform in sales and operations. As a result, they increased their monthly revenue to $60,000 plus for the company. Not bad. All right, you CEOs, this one is for you. Number six, delegate and step away. 36% of CEOs admit that delegation is a skill they need to improve on. Suffice it to say, stepping away from day-to-day -day operations is a big struggle. Fortunately, there's a way to strike balance. Michael Alexis, CEO of Team Building says, I intentionally removed myself from day-to-day -day decision making and project execution. I still participate, I'm openly available to the team, but I use the phrase, your call, to empower my team members to make decisions. Number seven, beef up your tech stack. 83% of surveyed business professionals require technology to collaborate effectively. So invest in top quality tools that enable you to run your business from anywhere in the world. If you're a manager who holds one-on-ones, use an employee management software like Soapbox, which is free in the AppSumo store for a limited time, or Fellow. You can create a list of action items and share the project statuses without having to message each other back and forth. If you're looking for a comprehensive tool to create a single source of truth, look into collaborative workspaces like Confluence and Notion. Whichever tool you use, focus on ease of use and integrations. So there you have it. We've walked through what cross-functional collaboration actually is, what the biggest challenges are, and how you can solve them. For more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next one. I intentionally remove my... I just called you because you're the most responsible. <laughs> Candace! <laughs> Thank you. Quiet on the set! No nonsense attitude. <laughs>